Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our class on Mastering Forex Price Action. Now, today we're going to start out looking at charts and the different types of charts and how to use primarily candlesticks and bar charts, and then we're going to learn how to use or interpret price action using these charts. Now, I would appreciate it greatly if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel by just simply clicking on the subscribe button down below or hit the bell icon. I promise you, we're not going to bother you with emails or anything. You'll just get a ping whenever I upload a new class. I would appreciate it greatly because this is how my channel survives. Now, as recently as the 1980s, brokers and traders charted the movement of assets by hand with nothing but graph paper and a pencil. And that's me in the 70s when I started trading. We would sit there and watch a ticker tape to get our prices and we'd have a notebook full of graph paper and we could only trade a few assets. There was no online trading. There was no PCs. And we would sit there and draw our prices on charts. Now, I was a bar chart trader. Most people use bar charts. In those days, candlesticks were a bit too time consuming to draw many charts in a very short time, a period of time. But in less than four decades, the charting industry has been revamped several times over, which has led to intricate, complex tables that traders decode today before executing currency trades. Now, let's get that in a little bit of explanation. Today's Java and HTML charts allow us to do just about everything. And we can flip from bar charts to candlestick charts, and the data feeds are instantaneous. And we have all the information we need to compete in this hectic world of Forex and CFD trading. An online trader today has access to the same charts professional traders bank and hedge fund traders are using. Now, I'm going to qualify this a little bit. Even though all of us have the technology now to do these data feeds are about the most important part of all of this. It's how fast the data is being fed into your charts to update your charts. If you're using a free charting service, okay, one that you're not paying for, like on investing.com or on Forex Factory, or even the ones from TradingView that are free, you're not getting false information. You're getting slower data feeds. Data is very, 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 very expensive especially on some of the smaller assets, the exotic currencies are on smaller exchanges. And therefore, the providers of these free charts use a data feed that sometimes has a couple second delay, sometimes has 30 second delay, okay? because it's the up to the second data that's important. Once it becomes a historical data, it's less important and the data companies charge a lot less and it takes a lot less servers to, to handle this. Now, if you're using Forex charts on your broker's platform, you're going to get instant data feeds because he needs to have these instant data feeds to constantly set his prices for trading. If you're using whether, and it could be TradingView. I have a, a professional account at TradingView and I have instant feeds. Nobody is trying to bamboozle you. Believe me, if you, if you sign up for a free account at TradingView, it's going to tell you right there in your paperwork that they have delayed feeds, slower feeds, because you can they're not going to pay for something that you're getting for free. Okay. And like I said, it's a lot of money. So please keep this in mind. Also, you have to find out on a broker's chart, a lot of times, and again, nobody's bamboozling you. They are feeding in the buyer, the sell price and not the actual price. And you can find, you can, it's in the paperwork. It's the price they're willing to sell or buy for you that asset, not the price that's actually trading it in the market because it's got the spread included. Okay. If you're using charts that aren't associated with the broker's platform, you're constantly having to look at what the spread is because you have to figure out your entry and exit points that are going to be available on your platform. So keep in mind all of this. Now, charting software allows those in any market to see price moves, observe price changes over various stretches of time, and combine this information to conduct market analysis and predictions. It's an absolute necessity for charting or carrying out intelligent trades. Without it, trading currency or CFDs or even cryptocurrency would be more like gambling, highly dedicated, dictated by chance.
Now, there are many different charts used in technical analysis. Some of the most common ones include line chart, bar charts, and candlestick charts. Now, we're not going to go off of, we're not going to really look at line charts because they're not, have no value to us. And there are some esoteric type charts that we're also not going to look at. They're very unique and there's some odd things and they're, they're, I'm not saying they're not good or they're not good. They're bad. Okay, I trade from bar charts and candlestick charts. But there's many, there's a whole range of these odd, I don't even, some of them have weird names, like Ikimoto, Ikimoto charts. And I, they're, they're, there's nothing wrong with them if you learn to use them. But the three standards are line chart, bar chart, and candlestick chart. Now, please, again, I'm going to remind you to please subscribe or hit the bell icon. Line charts have no value to us. Line charts only let us see a general market movement. Okay. And they give us a quick view. I never have anything set to line charts. Bar charts were my favorite for 30 years of trading. Today, I use candlesticks the most, but I thought bump back to bar charts just as often because today's charts, you just click on bar or candlestick and it just changes. It doesn't change any of your analysis that's on the charts, all your lines, all your setups, and it just changes the charts. Now, you have to remember that whether you're using a candlestick or a bar chart, you only have four pieces of information. You have the open, the high, the low, and the close. A bar chart is sometimes called an OHLC, open, high, low, and close. Now on a bar chart, it's very easy to spot things like support and resistance levels because a bar chart is a very uncomplicated type of visual representation of price and allows you to see things. So I use my bar charts always for drawing my support and resistance lines. Then candlestick charts. It wasn't until recently that we had all of these new Java charts and HTML charts that allowed us to use candlesticks beneficially. And now because you can jump back and forth by just clicking a button between bar and candlestick, bar, candlestick, and line, okay, it's a great, because I, candlesticks let me see how a market's doing by looking at the body of the candle and the wicks. Okay, and I can actually see what the market is trying to tell me with a candlestick chart. A bar chart gives you the same information, but it's a little bit more difficult to interpret. And the candlesticks with their bodies and their wicks let you see this in a better graphical format. So a candlestick has the upper wick and the lower wick and the body. And of course, today we use primarily reds and greens. In the old days, we used blacks and white candles. For no other reason, back in the old days when we were hand charting, we used a pencil. And if it was a, a bullish session, we'd just leave the candles to hollow. If it was a bearish session, we'd use the size of the pencil, color our, our candles in black. Okay. Today, you can use chartreuse in purple. As long as you know which color is bullish and which is bearish. I've even seen on some broker's accounts their charts are matched to the colors of their logos. But every chart gives you a setting to change it. You might like dark green. You might like light green. You might like to have a black border. Okay, it all depends on how you like your candlesticks. Okay, I prefer my candlesticks in a dark green with no border. And I want a clean chart. Now, candlestick charts are the most popular of the major chart forms. And as such, they are the type you will see most often as you trade. And they are a type I recommend you use when you learn and trade price action strategies. So why do traders love candlestick charts? Well, candlestick charts are highly informative. It's not only the information every chart element contains, but also regularly repeated patterns that help traders to see the ongoing changes. Now, before we had candlesticks, or we were using candlesticks, bar charts, and I'm going to show you, also had patterns. Okay. And they're relatively the same with different names, but they were much harder to see in a bar chart. 
And these patterns help us to see the short-term direction and predict the bullish and bearish trends. Just one element, a candlestick is able to reflect many parameters, such as the market's open, high, low, and close, and who's in control of the time frame. The color of the body indicates the result of the close. When the candle is red or black, it means that the close was lower than the open, and vice versa. The shadows, or longs and shorts, show the highs and the lows within that time. So the structure of all charts is pretty much the same. They have the X, Y axis. Okay, you can zoom, you can shade time frames, but we're not here to learn the basics of, of, of Forex charting. We have all other classes for that. Candlesticks are easy to interpret and are a good place for beginners to start out Forex chart analysis. Candlesticks are easy to use. Your eyes adapt to them almost immediately. Candlestick and candlestick patterns have cool names. Okay, let's not get into the names of patterns and let's not get into pattern recognition or pattern memorization. Candlesticks are good at identifying market turning points, reversals from an uptrend and downtrend or continuations. Now, as I said, I don't want to get into candlestick pattern recognition and candlestick pattern memorization. It is not a successful way for us to trade price action. Looking for a bullish engulfing or a hanging man and then making your trading decision isn't necessarily worthwhile. We should be able to recognize some basic patterns like a bullish engulfing because it does help us try to interpret what price action is saying. But you ought to need to understand that bar charts also have these patterns. Most traders focus on chart, candlestick charts and forget about bar charts. Now remember, each have the open, the high, the low, and the close. The direction of price has been moving during a, in a bar is indicated by the location of the opening and closing feet. Little dash to the left, little dash to the right. And the range of the trading for that period has been the width or the length of that particular bar. So as you can see, most people don't even realize we have these, but we have the bullish trend, which is higher highs and higher lows. We have the bearish, which is lower highs and lower lows. We have the outside, which is the higher highs and, and lower highs. These are all patterns that we can see in a bar chart. These were patterns we swore by for many years until people switched over to use candlestick patterns. Most people forget that these even exist. Exhaustion bar. We have the Pinocchio bar. We have the three bar reversal. We have the two bar reversal. We have the quiet top bar. Okay, These are quite interesting. If you have time, sit down and learn them. Don't memorize them, but see what they are. Because most people, 90% of the traders I talk to have no idea that there are bar chart patterns. Now, bar charts are also typically include volume, but so do candlesticks. And therefore, it is also recommended you understand buying and selling volume when reading a bar chart. It takes a bit of practice to get used to reading a bar chart, especially when the price is moving quickly. Now that we know what charts we have, we must start to use these charts. So what is price action? Price action is the movement of a securities price plotted over time. Price action forms the basis for all technical analysis of stocks, commodities, forex, cryptocurrencies. Many short-term traders rely exclusively on price action and the formation and, tr and trends extrapolated from them to make trading decisions. What's price action? Price action is looking at price on a chart. Technical analysis as a practice is a derivative of price action since it uses past price in its calculations that can be used to inform trading decisions. Price action analysis is the act of studying, reading, and interpreting the price movement of a market over time, which involves the use of raw price charts to trade the market with no indicators. Okay. By learning to read price action of a market, we can determine a market's directional bias as well as trade from reoccurring price action patterns and price action setups that reflect changes and continuations of price. So in other words, price action is being able to look at a bar chart or a candlestick chart 
with nothing else there and being able to tell you interpret what price is saying. From that point on, we can add tools to help us interpret what price is doing. Price action generally refers to the ups and down movements of a securities price when plotted over time. Different looks can be applied to a chart to make trends in price action more obvious to traders. Technical analysis formations and chart patterns are derived from price action. Technical analysis tools like moving averages are calculated from price action and projected into the future to inform traders. Price action can be seen and interpreted using charts that plot price over time. Many traders use candlestick charts since they help better visualize price movement by displaying the open high, low, and close. Price action is also can be looked at by applying or seeing patterns in the price movement on charts. Price patterns such as triangles, wedges, uh, double bottoms, double tops can all help us see what price action is telling you. So in addition to the visual formation of charts, many technical analysts use price action data when calculating technical indicators. The goal is to find order in the sometimes seemingly random movement of price. In other words, price movement is completely random. It's made up of millions of human beings making decisions. There are certain times during this random price movement that we actually and exhibit non-random action. When we can see in the price chart this non-random movement, we can then apply other tools to interpret what price is doing. This periods of non-random movement are known as trends, uptrends and downtrends. Once price is trending, we can start making some decisions. Price action is not generally seen as a trading tool like an indicator, but rather the data source of which all tools are built. Swing traders and trend traders tend to work most closely with price action in showing any fundamental analysis in favor of so focusing solely on support and resistance levels to predict breakouts and consolidation patterns. Even these traders must pay some attention to additional factors beyond the current price, as volume of trading, the time period being used to establish levels, and the likelihood of the interpretation being accurate. Interpreting price action is very subjective. It's common for two traders to arrive at different conclusions when analyzing the same price action. One trader may see a bearish downtrend. Another trader may believe price action has a potential near-term turn. Of course, the time period used also has a huge influence on what traders see as an asset can have many intraday downtrends while maintaining a month over month uptrend. The more tools you, you can apply to your trading predictions to confirm it, the better. In the end, however, the past price action of a security is no guarantee of future price action. High probability trades are still speculative trades, which means traders take the risk to get access to the potential rewards. So let's discuss how we can use price action analysis to find entries into the Forex or CFD market. What is a price action trading signal? This method consists of a handful of very specific price action entry triggers that can provide you with a high probability entry into the market. Essentially, what we are looking for is a re a reoccurring price pattern that tells us something about the market might do in the near future. So in this example, we can see that one price action trading signal I like to use is the inside bar setup. Now we have whole classes and just inside bars. We have whole classes and mother bars. We have whole classes and in, in setups. Okay. And we should be aware of these. These are different price action setups that we can use to find an entry point into the market. But we want to keep it simple. Five ways to read price action. We're going to talk about five ways to read price action and charts the easy way. Being able to read a price action chart is important to make the right decision. 
the problem many traders have is that they overcomplicate things and get it very confusing. One thing is you always want to look at the swing lows and swing highs. They tell you more about the market than anything else. Whenever I look at a market, I start by analyzing how swing highs and swing lows manifest in a chart. Are we in a rally or is prices making higher highs and higher lows? Or are we in a bear market and prices showing lower lows and lower highs? Or is the market in a transition phase where price is going from one phase to the next? If you want to get deeper, take a look at the distance between the trend waves and the swing points. As the distance increasing during a trend, then it usually signals a healthy and stronger momentum trend. If the distance between swing points is becoming smaller, it usually shows fading momentum. In other words, you have a trend on a chart and you're starting you're, and you're seeing big swings between the high and the low. Okay, the body is staying fairly consistent, but you see these big swings between the high and low and they're getting larger and larger or they're getting smaller and smaller. It tells you something about the market. Finally, look at the depth of the pullback. Small pullbacks during a trend usually show a strong trend, whereas deep retracements show that there is more back and forth going on. Although this sounds very basic, this type of price analysis can already tell you a lot about the market you are looking for and its price dynamics. By combining the analysis of pure swing highs and swing lows with the discussed technical patterns, a trader can make much more sense of a chart. So as you can see here, we have a beautiful downtrend. But at the end, we start to see these huge swing highs and swing lows. It tells us there's some shift in the market. We can see it here. We can see it here. All along here, we saw a nice steady set of how wide the price action was going to be. We also want to look at support and resistance, areas of local structure which show previous reaction points. Support and resistance areas are usually used to find high probability turning points or breakouts. The market snapshot we're going to look at in a second shows different ways horizontal support and resistance levels can be used from major market boundaries to smaller local zones. So as you can see here, we can see in the movement of a price the different areas or floors or lat steps of a ladder that price should be stepping on. If you're going down the ladder, you know where the rungs of those ladders should be. And then wave analysis is often overlooked topic in technical analysis. We hear the term waves and we think of Elliott wave theory. However, there's much more to wave analysis. Go back to what Dow and Charles Dow taught us about waves and how price moves in waves. Don't get it overcomplicated. Don't get into this Elliott wave with these subwaves and these subwaves and these subwaves and these A, Bs and Cs. But Dow explained the waves of a market. And we should be able to see this. So think of these as price action waves. Trend lines are arguably more subjective because drawing trend lines is more of an art than it is a science when it comes to using trend lines. I suggest you focus on two main concepts. The initial break of a trend line, which can shift a signal and direction. Okay. And having a valid trend line, three touches. Because once you have three touches, that trend line you drew, which was subjective, is now validated. The retest of a trend line after a break are marks in the blue area here on this chart and you can see all the different trends but how often they break and how little they're validated okay once you get a break of that trend line that trend line is no longer valid you need three touches of a trend line and then moving averages moving averages are another great confluence tool there are four main ways of using moving averages to make sense of charts and time trades as an entry filter only take trades in the direction of moving average as a general support and resistance tool to time entry opportunities on a retest of the moving average and a moving average cross can foreshadow a market transition period. It becomes obvious that the optimal length of a moving average depends on the trend and the strength of the trend. 
using two different moving averages can help us see exactly what's going on. A faster and a slower moving average will give us crossovers. A divergence between the faster and slower moving average can show us a trend in the market, or it can show us when they start to come closer, a divergence of the trend. But to sum it up, price action trading is a trading methodology that uses the movement of price as inputs for making trading decisions, it allows you to tell a story of what the price is doing and make higher probability trades based on that story. It is a form of technical analysis. As we mentioned, price action trading resolves, revolves around using only price of the security to make informed decisions of what the market might do. But it doesn't mean we can't look at it in different ways. So to sum it up, that's it for today, folks. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll talk to you again. And we have all kinds of classes breaking down different setups using price action. So please look for them on our YouTube channel.